one. Hello and welcome to the second episode of the RA Group Daily Webcast. Every day at 3.30 we will be hosting a live webcast with our panel of experts discussing a wide variety of topics to help you survive and thrive during the lockdown, including cooking demonstrations with David Sims, well-being and health advice, sommelier skills, mindfulness techniques, plus education around a variety of culinary topics. Today, our culinary director, David Sims, will be demonstrating how to make kombucha at home. Please feel free to ask any questions throughout the broadcast as we would love to keep this as interactive as possible. Now, over to David. Good afternoon, everyone. Hope you're well. Um, so today, I'm going to make kombucha, which is basically fermented tea. It is super healthy for you and really, really easy to make. Um, it's so simple. All it used is water, tea, sugar, and a thing called a scoby. So scoby is a, a culture, it's a live bacteria culture. So scoby stands for synthetic culture of bacteria and yeast. Really simple to understand. So what we'll do is go ahead and make the, the, the tea and I'll talk through the process I'm going to. So um, for the tea, I use uh, rare tea. Um, it's one of our suppliers, really, really good tea. It's loose leaf and for this one I'm using oolong. So oolong tea is really, really good and robust and really nice depth of flavour. Also, jasmine works very, very well indeed. Um, it's very light, but also allows you to flavour it very, very well. So I'm going to start off with just a pan onto the scales. I've teared it, so zeroed it off, and I'm going to weigh out 16 grams. So I'm making two litres of kombucha, so it's eight grams per litre of tea. It's very simply just going to weigh that out. Now also you need sugar, so the sugar is what feeds the, the bacteria and yeast. So normally it's around 8%, so for say 80 grams per litre. So you want to give it a good amount of sugar to start off to give it really good activation with the new, uh, new SCOBY. I personally then drop that down to about 5% on the, on the second or third bruise because obviously I don't like it too sweet. So here I've weighed out 150 grams of sugar, just pour that in there. Then I've got uh, some boiling water. So when you add the SCOBY, it needs to be around 25 to 30 degrees. So all I'm going to do is let me measure out 500 mils of water. Then I'll add 1.7 litres of cold water, so it brings it down the temperature quite quickly. So I'm just measuring out 500 grams. For those who don't know, uh, water for every one gram equals one millilitre. Same for any liquid in the same viscosity of water. So, and then I'm just going to give it a little stir, let the tea really infuse and open up. So I'll leave that to brew for five minutes, just so it really opens up and gets really nice and fragrant. Okay, so that's good there. So, once that's there, with, with the SCOBY, the brand new SCOBY like you've got here, Okay, it comes within its own tea. So um, if it comes chilled, what you need to do is leave it to come to room temperature about 40, 48 hours. So it's nice and nice and rested, nice and warm. Um, then what you do is you add your water. So I've got a jar, which is cleaned out to kill the jar, just label it with the kombucha on today's date. Um, now, one thing that's very, very important with SCOBYs, metal is it's like it's kryptonite, okay? so. Metal will kill the bacteria, kill the scoby instantly. So you can't have any metal touching the scoby at all. So I've got a ready wing on, so I'm just going to take it off. Very, very important. Make sure I don't lose that, otherwise I'll get very upset. So on the kiln jar, you've got a metal rim around the top. So what I'm going to do is remove the glass and then put that to one side because we don't actually need the because it needs to be venting. Uh, David, we've got a question from Steph who asks, why are we using loose leaf tea? Can this be done with a tea bag? Um, yes, you can. You can use a tea bag. Um, I, it, again, it's uh, bag tea is much more higher in tannin. Uh, it's a, a finer powder, so you get a much bitter, more bitter flavour. Obviously, loose leaf tea will give you a much fresher flavour. Um, obviously, the, depending on the depth and darkness of your tea, it will produce a much different floral flavour when it um, brews with the, the scoping and the sugar. 
So um, it's all about flavour profile. So, you know, yes, you can, but you just get a much better flavour from loose leaf. Okay. So I've got my jar, I'm just putting it on the scales. Again, I'm just going to zero it out so it's nil. I'm just going to pour in a litre of cold water. Go. and I'm just going to put that on the side. So, whilst we're listening to the tea brew, I'm going to talk through about the healthy scoby. So Gavin, if you just want to fit through to the picture for me. Okay, so there's two pictures there, guys, and that's the jar which you've seen in front of me there. So I, I started this a week ago. So the picture on the left, okay, so this is now really, really healthy. It's been brewing for seven days, and it's, you know, the sugars have started being eaten by the, uh, the scoby, so it's really starting to develop. So letter A shows you some strands coming off the scope, which is kind of floating mid water. OK, so that's the dark patches of yeast. OK, so that's absolutely normal. It's healthy. It doesn't mean it's bacteria or bad bacteria and you should leave it in there. It's absolutely fine. All the strands are floating again. That's just where the, the um, scope is really coming into life and it you know, really starts to develop some great flavour. B, the two arrows going to be is where a new scope is starting to form. OK, so you see a very thin layer floating at the top which I saw in the picture on the right. Okay, again, these are naturally perfect and shouldn't be removed and they will develop in time. Within mostly another seven to eight days, the scobies from the bottom will start floating up to the top and they'll connect with the, the scoby floating and become one mother scoby. So it'll just get much better and, and it will continue to get better as we, as we brew. Okay. So with, with the um, kombucha, this tea is now infused nicely. Okay, so it's really floral. The, the leaves have bloomed really nicely. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to pass that into my chilled water. Okay. Uh, David, we've got a question here saying, where do you get your scovies from? Okay, so I use a company called Happy Kombucha. I've used them for years. Um, you can get them either, they've got their own website, which is on the recipe link. Um, it's an organic culture. Um, so I find they're really, really good. They do different sizes, um, medium or large. The one I'm using today for a two litre uh, brew is a large scoby. So a, a large scoby will take two litres, so it's very, very important. On the first brew you do, you do not go over the, the maximum quota. On the front of the label, it will tell you the maximum it will take, so you know you remember that. Um, otherwise, you're just going to suck the life out of the scoby and it will just slow down its, its culture. The more and more you use it, the stronger it becomes, so then you can start topping up even further. So as I say here, We've got two litres in total with a time like this. I'm just going to strain it off nice and slowly for a sieve. So you can see that lovely flavour and colour in the, uh, the teas produced there. Really, really nice. Okay, I'm just going to pass that to the side. So then, really, really lovely uh, aroma coming out of that. Good, nice stir. So David, you okay. mentioned a few teas already. Are there any other teas other than jasmine and blacks, oolongs? Uh, you can use any tea, any tea, as long as it's a real tea. So as I say, um, it's it's any, yeah, whatever flavour you, you can use. You can use uh, uh, English breakfast, you can use builders, you can use actually anything. Um, but again, it's about what overall flavour you want to achieve at the end. Um, it depends if you've got a flavour on the second ferment, which I'm going to go through shortly. But yeah, literally any flavour tea, and it's trial and error, you know, I've found that I prefer oolong and white based on the on the vegetables and juices I had at the second stage. So now I've got my my tea, which is cooled down because it's going into cold water. And I'm now I'm just going to get my scoby. Okay, so as you can see, I hope you can see, it's a bag with inside a bag. Okay, so that's just so we don't get any um, have any accidents. So I'm going to gently or carefully open the top, remove the inner bag. And then as you can see, that's got liquid inside, okay? So all that is the tea, okay? So it's very, very important that this liquid goes into the jar, okay? So it's like it's like a real good bit of rocket fuel for, to start off with the cultures. It's really dense in, in, in nutrients, so it's going to help really drive this forward very quickly. So I'm just going to again carefully snip over the top. And then carefully, I'm just going to pour the liquor into the jar first. 
very, very carefully. Draw neck goes in. And I'm just going to fold the bag slightly so the scoby just drops into the jar. Now, Dave, we've got a question here from Sonia who asks, have you ever used a particular flavour that didn't work? Um, no, no. I mean, they, uh, there's uh, no, not at all. You also you can do um, if you the longer you leave kombucha to brew, it will turn into vinegar. So I mean, it really tends to the flavour profile is so unique, and you know, there's not one that I've not enjoyed. Um, again, it depends on really on your flavour and your personal choice. Um, there's you know, uh, no, the answer is no. I've never had one that doesn't work. So as you can see there, the scoby is kind of semi-floating, uh, which is fine. If it drops to the bottom, it's fine. It doesn't matter. And if it drops, uh, you know, midway, it really doesn't matter. Now what we'll do, because it's fermenting, muslin cloth, very, very simple. Um, obviously, if you, you seal the jar tight, gas will build up, okay, which then means it's going to overpressurize and it'll pop open. So muslin just helps it breathe. And also there's natural bacteria and yeast in the air, okay? So that will suck into the kombucha and help it ferment even further. So just a nice bit of muslin cloth over the top. Massive band, just goes over the top in place. Just hold it, hold it nice and in place. So now the best temperature for this to brew is anywhere between 22 to 27 degrees. So if you've got an airing cupboard, fantastic. I leave mine on the work counter in, in the kitchen. The most important thing is you just can't be in direct sunlight. Okay, direct sunlight will make the temperature you know, fluctuate too much and then end up killing the scoby. So somewhere like spine, just no direct sunlight. So flavoring and how long does it take? Okay, so for the first brew, anywhere between seven and 14 days it'll take to ferment the first batch. Okay, and that depends on how acidic you want it. Obviously, the longer you leave it, the more acidic it's going to become. But any, you know, any less than seven days is, is not really going to take the, the flavour on. So seven days, same place, taste it after seven days, obviously very, very important. Best way is just to pour a little bit off the top uh, into a cup, have a little taste. Don't put a spoon inside to taste the liquid. Obviously, if metal will touch the scoby and then the scoby will die. So very, very simply leave that to the side, seven days, taste it. So this batch here. Questions if that's okay. Yeah, probably. Then I ask, is this a drink you can have every day? And if so, does it replace your normal cup up? Ah, good question. So yes, um, so no, it doesn't replace your normal cup because it's fermented. It, you know, fermentation is, uh, or foods is really, really good for your, in your gut. So kombucha basically balances the pH level in your stomach. So it drives gut, gut health, so more beneficial. Your, your immune system is, is boosted, energy levels, metabolism, sleep patterns. Numerous, numerous benefits from that. Obviously, it's a live culture, so you want to start off with a small amount. So when you first start drinking kombucha, start off with about 75 mils, 80 mils a day, gradually stepping up. The maximum you can drink at any one day is 12 ounces, so 200, you know, 280 mils. Um, maximum you can really, really drink a day, otherwise it becomes too much in your stomach. Um, and kind of coke. Yeah, nice. basically, uh, maximum you do. So it comes in two stages. So obviously we've done the first brew. After 10 days, when it's ready, you then flavour and do your second fermentation. So that's this is the fun part again, where it takes, you, know, you can flavour it more, becomes um, much more depth of flavour, and also becomes slightly fizzy in the second fermentation. So as you can see here, I've got a jar, which I, I filled um, seven days ago, with the jar, it's got a tap at the bottom, okay? So it's much easier to filter off. Um, the very simple rule is when you filter off, say you filter off a litre, you top it back up with a litre of tea. Same sweetness and everything else, and then leave it for a further seven days. So it's called the continuous brew method. Okay, This is a five litre jar. For that, you need two large scobies if I was making five litres. Okay, So very, very simple. When it comes to second fermentation, you get a, a one litre bottle. Must have a rubber seal on it, as you can see here. Okay, When it comes to flavouring, you can add, the rule of thumb is 30% additional flavour. Okay, so for a little one litre bottle, I normally put 300 mils of flavour in there, okay? So what I do is I take a simple um, organic beetroot juice, okay? Just get from the supermarket, I do beetroot and ginger, 
Uh, beetroot is a, is a great uh, superfood for me. It's anti-inflammatory, it detoxes your liver. Not that I need that, um, but it's just a really good health benefits. Also, the ginger. Obviously, I've got a, a dodgy knee, as many of you know. So, you know, the anti-inflammatory benefits I find really, really helpful. Um, so, again, I'll just pour in very simply. Open the jar. Obviously, make sure it's clean. Simple funnel. Pour in, you know, third of the bottle. Well, you'll do that, David. Can I ask some more questions? Uh, Caroline yeah. writes in, for the way that kombucha is brewed, I'm guessing it's very low in sugar. Is that correct? Say again, Gavin. Uh, from the way that kombucha is brewed, I'm guessing it's very low in sugar. Is this correct? Yes. I mean, so as I say, the first batch, you want to put about 8% in. Um, I, I then multiple batches thereafter, I use 5%. But the sugar does get eaten by the bacteria, so it drops the sugar levels even lower. That being said, if you are diabetic, you should check with your, your doctor first because it is a sugar source. So you just be mindful of that. Um, so obviously fresh organic beetroot juice, any juice you can use at all, okay? So you, if you've got a juicer, you can juice fennel, carrots, kale, um, anything you want. Uh, if you use shop-bought juices, the only thing you should avoid using is cloudy juices, okay? Um, that's because it's got pectin in it. Pectin creates the cloudiness, and obviously that then attacks your SCOBY, and then ultimately will kill your SCOBY. So clear, fresh, cold pressed juice is ideal, or if you've got a juice yourself, absolutely fine. So again, 30% of your juice. I then just take some root ginger. Um, I finely slice it, drop it into the bottle, and then filter off um, kombucha from the jar here. I can't do that today because I took some out on Sunday to make some kombucha here. True blue Peter style. Yes, I made earlier. So um, as you see, it's settled up nicely. The, I don't know if you can catch that down the bottom. There's a little bit of sediment. Bring it over to the camera. Oh yeah. A little bit of sediment at the bottom there. That's just the yeast. Okay. So once you've got your flavour profile in there, you put the seal on and leave it at room temperature for 48 hours. Okay. That just continues the fermentation. So it takes all the sugars out of the juice you've added. It is that fermentation pro, uh, process. Then that's where the gas starts coming in. So this will then become fizzy. So you just pop it open. And then again, just take a nice little glass of it. You know, in the morning, I have it every morning. Super, super tasty. And just gives you great health benefits. Cheers. Cheers. So Dave, we've got a bunch of questions. Um, yes. I'll start with uh, this one. Can I culture my kombucha tea in a cupboard? Yep, yeah, you can. As I say, dark places are just as fine. Um, again, the trick is make sure you've got a, a muslin cloth on top so it can breathe and aerate. Um, also, uh, we have another question. How many trial and error batches did you have? Um, to be fair, they've all worked. Um, but again, it's about trying the different, the different teas to get the flavour you like. I mean, I use kombucha for cooking. Again, if you continue to fermentate it for, you know, up to like 21, 28 days, it'll become vinegar. Um, so it's great for marinades, um, sauces, dressings. You can take it all the way to vinegar. Also, it's got great shelf life. So once it's gone into a glass bottle for the second fermentation, you can leave it in your fridge indefinitely. So, you know, it won't go off in, in there. But the only thing when you've got a sealed bottle, very important that you release the gas every kind of day or so otherwise the gas will continue to continue to grow obviously in the fridge it won't but if it's at room temperature it's like leaving a bottle of champagne in direct sunlight it's going to go pop okay so you just need to be mindful of that but you know it's got a great um life life on it the only way it can go wrong in a jar like this is if it gets contaminated so if some dirt gets in there then you'll see um bacteria growing on the top it's very, very obvious. Is it's like mould growing on uh, any food. You see it floating on the top um, of the liquid. Anything within the liquid is fine. It's yeast. But anything on top of the liquid means it's bacteria. If that happens, you need to throw away everything. Okay. Now, unfortunately, that happened to me with a 140 litre batch once I made, which was quite upsetting because it's quite expensive that volume. But um, yeah, no, not not one batch has gone wrong. Touch wood. Um, and again, it's all about choosing the flavour profiles that's important to you in your, your product. Can you tell us about the health benefits of kombucha? 
Um, yeah, as I say, it's I mean, luxury. This is maybe something you can join in with. Um, for me, it's about it's neutralizing the um, pH in your stomach that drives uh, positive gut health, which is, again drives great immune, immune boosting systems, which is great for this current times. Also, it gives you a nice bit of um, energy in the mornings. Luxie, anything else? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think further to what David said, I guess fermented foods generally at the moment, you've probably seen in the past, what, two, three years, massively grown. So, you know, the likes of kombucha, kefir, sauerkraut, um, all of them, it's massive at the moment. Um, I guess a lot of the benefits around kombucha, it's mainly the use of probiotics, um, which is as kombucha is a product for fermentation, a number of probiotics are produced um, and at certain concentrations, they can help um, sort of gut microbiota and help support your immune function. Um, unfortunately, to date, there's still a lot of clinical research that still needs to be done before any um, sort of legal claims can go about some of these products, but um, definitely a very sort of innovative space at the moment of so much happening and so many products. Um, but I also had a question for David, actually. Um, David, would you say the longer you leave it, the better, I suppose, in terms of taste or? Um, so in, in, in the second fermentation, definitely. Um, in the first one, it's all about how acidic you want it. So you know, as I say, anyway, it will start producing um, right now, it will taste like sweet tea or semi-sweet tea, um, and it'll, as it goes through day one through day seven, it just gets more acidic. Um, I normally find on the first batch, so I filtered off this on day seven, and it's perfect, really nice level of acidity. Um, as as it gets stronger, so as I topped, I topped this up with another litre as I took a litre out, you know, that will then speed up. Um, so maybe, you know, within kind of two weeks, Every three days, I've always filter some off because it just gets faster and faster. Um, so there's no right or wrong. It's just how acidic you like the drink. Right. On the second fermentation, that's where you develop the flavour. So you're adding, you know, you're adding your, your juice or whatever else, you know, your ginger. You know, you can add herbs, um, celery. Again, depends on what you want to do. So everyone's got different uh, needs, different things. Whether you want a um, speed up metabolism, you know, like celery or fennel, or if you just want to have uh, health benefits from you know, entry inflammatories or anything else, you can choose your ingredients appropriately. Or just if you like apple juice or you want to have you know, flavor that. But the longer you leave it to second ferment, it gives you much more depth of flavor. So much more roundness and the beetroot and the ginger from there is changed even in, in the 20, yeah, 48 hours it's been in that bottle. It just gets better and better. It's like, it's like a wine, I guess. Um, you'll just get much more depth of flavor. But that means you'll get more yeast growing at the bottom, okay, which is fine. Um, you know, if you get, if you want to just have a jar of it and get off, the yeast will come up, just to can off the liquid um, so you don't have the yeast at the bottom. If you don't have the yeast at the bottom, it won't go fizzy. Okay, so if you like it slightly uh, better than fizzy, the yeast needs to be in there to keep it going. Um, but that, that now is um, kind of like lightly sparkling water. Within another day or so, it'll be kind of like lemonade fizzy, but not the sweetness. We have a question from Nicoli who says, can you keep it unflavoured? I assume if she only ferments it once, would it be less flavoursome? Um, you can, absolutely. So if I took that off and just put it into the bottle, again, it's not going to get any more acidic because I've taken the scoby out of the, uh, of the process. Um, the yeast that's in the liquid, as you can see at the bottom, drops the bottom, that's where the fizz comes in. But that's where you get really pure, um, all the flavours from the tea really start coming to, to, to prevalent flavour prevalent at the front. So again, like a white jasmine tea, which is so floral and, and fresh and amazing, that works very well just on its own. You know, so you decant it and you get all the beautiful aromas and, and flavour profile from the, the great teas. That's where it really pays to use a very good quality um, tea because you get those flavour profiles come through. That's what I'd do if I was matching to food. Um, you know, so you just use the pure tea as the flavour profile um, and then go off there for the, that purpose. Great. Uh, we have a question from Julie Lawson who says, how can you tell if a Scooby is going or has gone bad? Perhaps you answered this with the bacteria uh, issue you highlighted. Yeah, so again, um, if you flip back to the, the picture, um, Gavin. Oh. One second. <laughs> No. 
So, you know, as you can see on the, the picture, the, the scope is floating midway, which is fine, it doesn't matter top, middle or bottom. But there's some dark patches. If you look at the arrows coming off A, there's some dark patches attached to the strands floating off the SCOBY. That, look, that looks like bacteria, but it's actually pockets of yeast, okay? So that's what's feeding um, the SCOBY. So that's absolutely fine. Likewise, on, on the picture on the right-hand side, which is new SCOBY, that's the new SCOBY floating on top and it will form and gel. gel. If you get mold spores growing on the top where it says new SCOBY, that is when it's gone bad. OK, it doesn't matter if the scoby itself changes colour. OK, but when you get uh, mould spores growing on the top of the liquid, like you do if you everyone see mould spores growing on, on food, OK, that, that's bad. OK, then you have to throw away the whole thing. OK, you'll also tell by the smell. OK, so if it goes like a really pungent, um, like a, a dirty sink or mop water smell, that's where it's, it's gone, you know, you know it straight away. Uh, it smells awful. Um, that's the that, that's when it's bad, and the only way is by seeing the the mold spores. It's so obvious that it's 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 that obvious. It's it's like bizarre. Yeah. Maybe this answers the same question that Gelio asked. What signs should I look for to determine the kombucha is culturing properly? So again, the picture on the left there is perfect. Okay, that's so a great example of a really healthy um, scoby. So if you look at the, if you see the color, um, when you come back on the screen, you'll see the two different colors between the jar I made today and the jar and the large jar, okay? So it goes slightly more, I mean, if you see the color there, that's quite pale, okay? This is exactly the same tea, okay? Um, that's really pale. And this one is kind of gone a lot more yellow, de deeper in color, much more um, slightly cloudier. But it's really changing and developing and really nurturing. The scoby floating in the middle, okay, it's great. The strands coming off the scoby, new scobies being formed means it's really active. Um, you know, likewise, you'll get to a stage where it won't grow anymore, okay, and it will just, you'll end, I'll end up with a scoby covering the top, the top of that jar, okay, it'll be a nice thick scoby, super healthy, and, and everything like that. If we take a, um, a jar like this and you brew this method at home, when you pour the, um, the, the kombucha off, the really important thing to do, which I mentioned earlier, is you must leave the scoby floating in tea, okay? So if you don't want to make a batch for a, a period of time, that's fine, just leave 25% of the jar with, with the tea in it, the scoby floating in there with the muslin cloth on it, and it's absolutely fine, okay? And when you want to come back to brew some more, again, top up the liquid, You'll be absolutely, you know, again, it'll just, it'll just continue going forever and ever. It's like anything there, if you don't feed it, it'll just become dormant. So it'll sit there quite happily. Once it's eaten all the sugar and the liquid, it'll just stay dormant. The minute you add fresh tea to it with more sugar, it'll continue to ferment and ramp up its fermentation process, just like any, any yeast or bacteria. Um, again, the bulk brew method for me works much better. Again, it's all I need to do is pour fresh tea on the top. Um, ambient temperature as I filter off the bottom. So same to clean the jar and then maybe every three months all I do is decant that into a clean jar, wash the jar out, pour the tea back in with the scobies again making sure the scobies aren't touching the metal just to make sure it's nice and clean and, and healthy. Again changing the muzzle in every kind of six to eight weeks again just helps it stay nice and healthy because as we all know there's numerous bits of dust floating around the air which will sit on top of your muzzle cloth. Great. Uh, we've actually got a bunch of questions, David. Um, hopefully we can answer them quickly. Um, Alex asks, are there different types of SCOBY or do they all do the same thing? And we have another question is, how many times can you use the SCOBY? Okay, good questions. Um, so there's, there are different types of SCOBYs, organic or non-organic, okay? Um, and again, I, I went through a bunch of uh, companies before I found Happy Kombucha and, you know, the, for me, the quality difference uh, the the, the scobies make in the tea is much better. Um, so organic um, scobies I find give a much better yield and a much better flavour profile. Um, so two large scobies um, for a jar this size cost fifteen pounds. Um, so great really. So really quite cheap. If you were to buy kombucha from a supermarket, you know one litre bottle is anywhere between five and six pounds. You know two fifty ml bottles about two pound forty five three pounds. So part of what you put bought the scobies and the equipment and the tea, it's relatively cheap. Um, so yeah, I would go for an organic scoby 
um, gives much better flow profile, much better. Um, second question, you can use it, it's like anything, right? you've got to keep feeding it, okay? Um, it won't die as long as you leave in 25% of its liquid and become dormant. Um, it's like it's like yeast or bread or a starter. You've got to keep feeding it to give it give it some energy. Okay. The more regularly you use it, the better it becomes. But again, you can, as I say, leave it dormant for 12 months in the cupboard, sitting in some liquid, and it'll be absolutely fine. Um, the only time you've got to stop using it is it's mouldy and bacteria grow. Right? Great. I've got some more questions. Sean asks, are the caffeine levels high? Maybe this is for you and Luxy. Okay, um, so they're not. Obviously, tea is, as we all know, it's got caffeine in it. Um, obviously, your, your, the volume you're using and the, the, the fermentation process removes the caffeine. Um, so you're left with the floral notes and the caffeine is gone. Right, same as the sugar. It's actually feeding off that during the brewing process that drives the, creates the, the fermentation process. Uh, the flavour profile, so that's, it's good, so it's low caffeine. Lexi, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, um, just um, to add to what David said, yeah, it's no different really to sort of the caffeine levels you'd find in like a normal cup of tea um, per se, because like you said, it's what's in the actual tea bag itself. But a lot of that, just as he, um, David mentioned with the sugar, it's used in the process itself. So it, it doesn't actually end up in the finished product. Great, uh, we have a bunch more questions. We're almost out of time as well. Uh, Steph asks, will the bottle explode with the buildup of gas? Yeah, it will one day. Um, <laughs> this gets how you look after them when you treat it. So again, in the second fermentation, when you've got a sealed lid on it, you'll leave out room temperature, but as I say, 48 hours, kind of the right time. You'll test it and you'll see how fizzy it gets. The longer you leave it at room temperature, you will continue to ferment, so it'll become fizzier. So if you left it indefinitely, Yes, it will. Okay. So again, it's, it's like it's like a um, anything with yeast in it. That's why I use this type of lid instead of a screw top lid um, because it gets so much and just pop itself off. Okay. Um, whereas if you have a screw lid, it's it's you know it's it's got nowhere to go, so it becomes, it becomes very pressurized and it could you know when you screw it go go crazy. So these these lids are much better. Um, but once you're happy with the level of fizz and people will like it different ways, then you put it in your fridge and then retard the fermentation. So it will not get any fizzier sitting in the fridge. Again, if you've got it without the yeast at the bottom, it won't get fizzy anyway. So you can play it either way. Um, but again, don't leave it in direct sunlight because um, it'll get really excitable. And then when you pop the lid, it's like shaking a bottle of coke before you open the lid. Right. Uh, Eddie asks, uh, how much headspace do you leave in the bottle for the second fermentation? Should we fill it up to the top? No, great question. Um, so I, I don't know if you saw when it came out of the fridge, I kind of had it up to the, the, the curve of the neck. So I left it about 150 mils shy of, of the uh, bottle. That's when you're doing the second fermentation. Obviously, if you're in, if you're in the second fermentation in a jar, you can then fill up the bottle fully before you put it in the fridge. It depends where, you, where you're doing it. If it's in this type of need a good bit of breathing space, same as with your jars, okay? You need room to, to move and activate. Great. Uh, Caroline asks, what foods complement kombucha? And maybe Ben may have some suggestions as well. Yeah, again, kombucha is a great way of, um, of matching drinking with food. Obviously, it's a non-alcoholic variant. Um, again, it depends on the type of tea you use. Um, white teas tend to work very well with shellfish. Um, so again, jasmine would be, work great with, with uh, scallops or whitefish. And obviously, the darker teas work with uh, red meats, etc. So um, if you want to do a wine flight, when I was at Long Clune, we did actually a 19 course menu, which we actually had four different kombuchas in it, stayed through the menu, um, using all the teas. We used the green tea for a dessert, white tea for a, a shellfish dish, and then uh, did a really smoky black tea for a venison dish in the main course. So different different teas would go with different flavor profiles. Same as grapes uh, with wine will match different to different meats, but really, really great non alcoholic version of matching with food. Really, really tasty. Great. Um, if it's fermented, does that mean it will become alcoholic from anonymous? Um, it, it will become, uh, you know, without testing every batch, it comes out about 0.5% of a um, of a alcohol volume, so it's very very low. Um, you know, 
you know, I haven't tested every batch, but there's been tests done on numerous ones. And again, the retail ones you buy anywhere between 0.5, 0.75. So it does very, very low, low, low content. Great. Uh, would you say it would work better with white, green or oolong tea rather than black, which is high in tannins and caffeine? So again, what's the question? Uh, the question is, is it better with white, green or oolong rather than uh, traditional black teas? Um, again, it depends what your, your personal preference is. It works with all, all of those teas. Again, you know, the stronger the tanning, um, it does create a much different flavour profile with the kombucha. And so I, I personally like oolong um, as, a, as a good one with beetroot. If I'm using fennel and apple, um, from a digestive system, then I'll, I'll use jasmine for that because it works much nicer and much fresher. Um, you can use black tea. If you use black tea, I would put something herbal with it to neutralize some of the tannins, but you know, it, it does work. Citrus obviously doesn't work great with um, kombucha because the acidity is coming through from the fermentation process, so you kind of avoid acidity. Um, you know, it's fine, but you can add, you know, fresh herbs, mint, thyme, bay. Um, you know, again, fennel, dill, the, the cucumber works very, very well. Um, again, it depends on what you want to achieve from, from it. Just play around with it, experiment, and you'll, you'll know very soon what you like or don't like. Um, right. But again, dark teas I would use more for, for not second fermentation, matching with food. Great. Uh, Johnny asks, after the second fermentation is done, can you freeze it to drink later? Um, it's a very good question. I've never tried it. Um, I might try that today. Um, I can't see why not. Um, as long as I couldn't do, I think obviously um, you know you'll lose on on the defrost. You'll lose all any fizz that was in there before, and, and I'll certainly strain off uh, the yeast part at the bottom of the bottle because um, that will just become sludge when you freeze it. It won't be very nice. Um, but there's no reason why you couldn't freeze it now. Uh, we have another question. Uh, for how long is the shelf life? Uh, if you've got clean jars, um, indefinitely. You know, there's there's no proven use by date for it. Um, again, the, the important thing is you sterilise your jars and your bottles before you do it. Um, and then, it's, you know, this is in this format, it'll continue to go as long as you feed it. And this format, if you keep it in the fridge uh, after you've fermented it for the second stage, um, it's indefinite. There's there's no proven facts. Many of the producers, the Scobies, um, will quantify that. So it's definitely just get better and better with flavour. And a few people have asked, can you grow your own Scooby? So that's what we're doing here. So, you know, um, you, you, OK, you can in the lab, but not at home. This is actually producing its own Scooby. On the picture, you saw another one growing on top. So you could, what I could do is once that gets strong enough, I could take that Scooby out of this jar, put it into another jar, start another batch. They grow themselves, they just keep on making, that's another sign of a really healthy um, scoby, um, it's because it's producing siblings. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's, it's great and then you just get multiple use. Then, you know, you, you just keep producing them and you, you're making more and more kombucha thereafter. Great. Uh, Fatima asks, can I use a plastic bottle to brew kombucha? You can indeed. So again, uh, Happy Kombucha um, provide, you know, sell everything. They do glass jars, they do 20 litre buckets, brewing vessels, um, anything. The, the, the one thing you can't touch is metal. Let's say metal is like kryptonite, it's going to kill it instantaneously. You don't see it shrivel up and die, but it will just deactivate it, you know, in one touch of metal and it won't become active. Um, likewise, you'll know if it's if it's died, um, bacteria will, will eventually start to form because it's not eating eating in the, the yeast. Um, but also the flavour will not change, you just don't get any acidity change, you just stay like uh, neutral tea. Right. Uh, Fatima also asks, are children allowed to drink kombucha? Yes, they are. Um, again, um, obviously it's it's no different, uh, you know, it's not unhealthy at all. Let's say the first batch is normally quite sweet, you know, 8% eight, eight sugar is quite sweet. Um, that's purely to get some food going into your, your scoby. Second brew, down to 5%, it's, it, it's, it's less sweet than cordial. Um, so yeah, it's, it's really refreshing. Having a glass of this in the morning, um, you know, before you go to work, you know, it's really, really um, high acidity, nice little fizz, very, very fresh and floral. So it's a great, great drink. If you get the kids to drink it, amazing. My kids love it. Okay. <laughs> 
And then our last question from Johnny, uh, with the acidity level, could you use the kombucha as a cure for something like fish? Absolutely. You just need to take it further in this in this process. Um, again, for um, Wimbledon last year, we made a um, jasmine with apple and fennel vinegar, um, kombucha vinegar, to uh, go with a cured mackerel dish in the starter. So yeah, absolutely, it's a great marinade because um, the flavour you get from it is, is, is so many layers. It's fantastic, much better than normal vinegars. Fantastic. Uh, Luxie, do you have any of the questions? No, I think that's all for me. But I think um, sim um, just to add to what David said, I think if you've never tried it before, like he said, I think definitely start with sort of small sort of um, servings and um, just because, like you mentioned, David, how yeah. your, I guess your digestive system just to get used to drinking something that's possibly quite different to anything else you might have had in your diet. And especially if you've not really had any type of fermented foods before either, it's definitely worth I think just to first try it and slowly introduce that as part of obviously a, a balanced healthy eating diet. Yeah, absolutely. You'll, you'll certainly know that if you're drinking too much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, ben, any final questions from yourself? Uh, no, I mean, David, we've, um, we can see like an upturn in, uh, in people using fermentation in food and it's on menus. Would you say this is down to health benefits maybe or uh, different flavours or just maybe following the crowd? Um, I'd say, you know what, it's much of a mixture of the two, Ben. Um, certainly, fermentation has been around for years, right? Um, I mean, look at sourdough, it's how bread used to, be, used to be made originally. Beer, wine, vinegar. It's always been there, but obviously it comes out on train when you hear more about it. Um, I mean, I've been brewing kombucha for you know, 10, 12 years. Um, you know, likes of Noma is really on trend because they're doing massive fermentation stuff. Um, and some top, top, you know, top name chefs have been doing it for multiple years. But it's again, it's about awareness. It's like anything, the more something comes aware, the more we hear about it, it becomes more on trend. Um, but I think it's something, it'll be around forever because um, it's been around forever. Um, and people should really embrace it and, and you know it's great fun you know getting some great flavours you're working with it um, you know yes I've you a long tea in here but I can once I've drained it off I can put a different tea in there and make another batch you can really trial and error with it it's a great great thing multiple benefits and I don't think it's going anywhere. Amazing well thank you very much David for a fascinating demonstration uh, our next webcast will be tomorrow at 3 30 with Luxy uh, our senior nutritionist, who you just heard from. Uh, she's going to be discussing healthy eating during the lockdown and how to support a healthy immune system. Uh, for more information about our programme of discussions, please go to RA Group's website at www.ragroup.co.uk forward slash news to download the broadcast links and recipes. Meanwhile, if you have any questions or suggestions about how you can get involved, please email communications at restaurantassociates.co.uk. Thank you for joining us today and we look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Cheers guys, thank you.